Okay, so here we go. Right, uh, looking at um, Second Timothy now. Right, Second Timothy um, again. Paul lays down, reiterates some of those important things of uh, uh, stirring up the gift which was given uh, to Timothy. Verse 13, hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. And that good thing which was committed, you keep by the Holy Spirit um, and so on. Right? Um, in chapter 2, it talks about the reality of, uh, of the ministry. It says, you must endure hardship as a good soldier of um, Jesus Christ. Right? You must endure hardships. Um, and also uh, talks about, um, uh, you know, about the way in which uh, someone who is in warfare, uh, what, is that, what is that person's mindset and how they will not entangle himself with, you know, certain things, but really be focused and also talks about athletics uh, and so on. So, um, so the, the, the reality is that, um, you know, uh, so, so we see that Paul is really not holding back anything from Timothy, He's just telling him, this is the reality. It's, it's hard work. And uh, therefore uh, there will be hardships involved and you endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Um, then he also uh, talks about, um, uh, uh, reminding again and again uh, in verse 14 he says remind them of these things charging them not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers um, uh, be diligent to present yourself approved to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so um, again uh, so uh, we, we see that okay typically uh, Ephesus may have had a, a challenge like we saw uh, uh, about with regard to doctrine, with regard to a lot of uh, you know other things coming into the church, but we also you know we see that this is um, a good uh, instruction for those who are doing spiritual ministry, uh, those who are doing uh, ministering in the church, right? Um, and then he, uh, he he warns Timothy. He also talks about the example of uh, Hymenaeus and Philetus and about their message and how they have concern, uh, strayed from the truth uh, and they overthrow the faith of some. So that's the, you know, so that's the reason that Paul is again and over and over again uh, reminding Timothy to be rooted in the word, to, uh, to uh, immerse himself in the word of God and to teach the right thing uh, because there are others who are overthrowing the faith of some and uh, definitely you know, we don't want to do that as ministers, as pastors, right? Um, and uh, uh, chapter three talks about how, uh, you know, it talks about how there is misuse and abuse, right? And and uh, and uh, warns Timothy about that, right? Um, it's talking about how people will be. Uh, un unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, uh, having a form of godliness, denying its power, and uh, one who, the, the, those who creep into households. Uh, chapter verse six, chapter three, verse six, making captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, and so on. And also names a couple of uh, people, and um, and then he says uh, that you know, they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all, their, their fruit will be uh, manifest to all. Um, but saying, you know, that's something that you need to watch out for. Because in verse 10, he says, you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, and and all that. And he said, and again says that those who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. Um, and... Uh, but you continue, okay, verse 14, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Okay, so so it gives the reality to uh, Timothy about uh, about the ministry and uh, and what he should do, what he should not do, uh, and so on. Chapter 4 says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Okay, so be ready to minister the word, uh, be ready in season and out of season. And... Um, uh, which means that uh, you be ready at all times, 
right? Um, in in different seasons of life, in in the ups and downs, you'll be ready to minister the word, preach the word. Uh, and then he lays down four things, right? Convince, rebuke, exhort. Oh, sorry, three. Uh, convince, rebuke, and exhort. And of course, fourthly, the, uh, the uh, preaching the word also. Uh, along with that, says convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and with teaching. Right. So, so it's preaching and then teaching, but also there is, uh, you know. Uh, he adds those three other elements of convincing. There is also rebuke and there is exhortation. Um, and he's saying, be watchful, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So as a, uh, as a pastoral call, uh, obviously Timothy also had, uh, had an evangelistic call. So Paul is saying, you know, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Um, so, so we see this in First Timothy and Second Timothy, and I'm sure you know uh, if you if you look closely and if you read through, you will see many other instructions, uh, uh, and which we can glean and say, okay, this is what a pastor does. Right? And Titus, in Titus, we see uh, a similar thing, you know, and we see many of those uh, qualifications uh, being repeated. You know, to uh, Titus, who's in Crete, and he is doing a similar ministry like uh, like Timothy, uh, overseeing the, the church there. So here also he says, you know, uh, I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, and so on. Okay. And then he says, "For a bishop must be so." Um, you know, you know, the elders. He uses the word presbyteros, and uh, bishop here, the word uh, you know, escope. So, uh, using that these two words uh, interchangeably, referring to uh, people who are giving spiritual op oversight. Okay, um, and also their qualifications: blameless, steward of God. Not self-willed, not quick, uh, quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word, as he has been taught, that he may be able, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Okay, so he talks about uh, all this. Um, chapter two. Speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, okay, doctrine which accords with uh, godliness. Okay, so uh, Beth's question is, were Timothy and Titus married at the point of these letters being written? Uh, I'm not really sure uh, about that, uh, Beth, because, um, well, we don't see uh, Paul referring to, you know, the marital status of uh, these two young men. So uh, I'm not really sure of that, uh, whether, whether they were married at this point or at some other point in life. Um, we're not sure. Yeah. Um, I guess your question is because, uh, is, is there any uh, other this thing? Uh, it was some, many times we, you know, when it comes to pastoral ministry, you know, sometimes uh, some churches have this thing that one must be married in order to be a pastor. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Do elders need to be married? Uh, well, we see that, um, uh, well, we don't uh, uh, see that as a as a requirement, right? Um, the only thing is he just qualifies. If they are married, then they need to be, right? That's what we see. If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, uh, having faithful children, uh, you know, and so on. Um, so, which is, you know, if they are married, then this is this should be the nature of their uh, household and so on. Um, so, we don't see, uh, you know, Paul laying down because he himself, uh, you know, doesn't seem to be married, seems to be single uh, at the point of writing these uh, or in, in these missionary journeys and so on. So, um, so you know, so we don't uh, really see that as a condition. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, okay, so let's um, 
so so, yeah, so titus he, he, he for titus he just lays down these examples um and uh, and which is similar uh, you will see the it, it similar to first timothy and second timothy and um, uh, uh so we we kind of understand okay um so this is the nature of uh, the ministry and these are the qualifications uh, uh or these are some things that uh, in terms of character in terms of ability we look for people um uh, and so on right um in chapter 3 we see um avoid uh, chapter 3 and verse um uh, verse 9, avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, strivings about the law, uh, for they are uh, profitable and useless. Um, and then he goes on to say, reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is walked and sinning, being self-condemned. Uh, Okay, so if you, if you read before that, uh, he talks about being subject to authorities and uh, you know uh, to be ready for every good work and and all those uh, qualifications um, to be peaceful, being uh, showing humility, etc. Right, and so um, here again, he says uh, you know if a person is divisive, uh, dividing the body, um, so uh, he says uh, you know, reject, but after the first and second admonition. Okay, we are told not to be hasty in laying on of hands. Okay, yet Paul also tells Timothy not to let others look down on him because of his youth. How do we go about appointing an elder if they are young? Do we recommend a person to have had a proper job before coming into full-time ministry? Okay, you are told not to be hasty. So, so the first part of that question is, uh, yeah, uh, we see Paul saying not to appoint people hastily, right? Um, so, uh, and also previously, also he says uh, when it comes to deacons, he says, uh, you know, make sure that they are not novices, uh, they're not they're not new to these uh, or inexperienced in this, so that they don't become puffed up. You know, people are looking up to them and they are maybe, uh, you know, uh, carrying on certain responsibilities. So they should not be become proud and puffed up. So so that's the reason why he's saying, you know, don't be hasty in overseeing uh, or in appointing uh, leaders. Um, and yes, and Paul also says not to let others look down on him. So, so it's not just um, the age. Right, so one can be young, at the same time, uh, you know, be mature, right? Uh, the because the age of the person uh, or the crowd, uh, you know, the, the physical age of the person uh, does not really matter because uh, the person can be uh, of a certain age, uh, but then uh, they might be mature beyond their years, right? Uh, so. Uh, and and uh, Timothy seems to be of such a person. You know, he, he says, you know, I've seen the faith which was in your mother and your grandmother Lois, and so I'm sure it is in he in you also. And and obviously Timothy, Titus, all these people were part of the ministry team. Uh, and and so uh, Timothy, being a young person, he says, don't look down on your youth. So so that's that's one thing. So so we know that uh, a, a person can be physically very uh, you know natural age could be uh, physical age could be um, less, but they could be mature, and uh, they need not be a novice in these things. They could be, you know, believers uh, exposed to, uh, you know, ministering and so on. So, um, so, yeah. So that's that's the thing. So we appoint an elder, uh, even if they are young. But if you see that they have a heart for ministry, they have they also um, display certain, you know, maturity and experience uh, and sincerity uh, in their work with God. And they'll continue to grow, of course. Right? And also in giving them the, the task, um, uh, we Paul says you test in the sense you let them do certain things and you see that over a period of time. And then, you know, maybe uh, the testing period can be, uh, you know, a, a season of giving corrections, bringing things in alignment, which are not yet, in a, uh, not yet aligned uh, with regard to certain aspects of their life maybe you know some character issues maybe some um some theological standpoint whatever you know that can be brought in alignment and then 
they can be released into uh, uh, you know put on the job but the second part of the question is how do we go about uh, okay, uh, do we recommend a person to have had a proper job before coming into full-time ministry? Well, um, you know, the thing is that if uh, uh, that that need not be the case, you know, that need not be the case because uh, um, sometimes God just calls people. Uh, it depends on the call of God, right? Uh, God just calls people who... Uh, um, you know, who maybe uh, been studying and then God calls them into ministry and they don't maybe not necessarily hold a full-time uh, job or vocation. Uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, but, you know, but when, when you see Paul writing about, um, especially in, um, in chapter 4, First Timothy, uh, he talks about how um, one should take care of uh, own household, right? Uh, he says, uh, you know, those who, uh, you know, if they don't provide for their own household, like chapter 4 and verse 8, um, especially those, uh, you know, if they do, don't provide for their own, then uh, they've actually denied the faith and worse than an unbeliever. So, so the thing is, uh, you know, is the person of a certain age where they can provide for their household and are they deny you know are they uh, kind of not doing that you know that, so that would be you know something to watch out for right um, but to uh, for a person to be to have a regular job you know maybe not not really uh, maybe not not in all cases right um, but maybe you know uh, Sometimes it, it just so happens they are they are in this in that season of uh, uh, learning in the season of being equipped and training, being trained for that transition into uh, you know so called full time ministry, and you know it would help to take care of their needs, maybe take care of the needs of the family for the person to have uh, you know uh, have a uh, be gainfully employed, right? Whether it's full time, uh, you know, freelancing, whatever. Uh, to be gainfully employed, you know, so that they can take care of the needs while being, you know, trained, equipped, uh, and uh, being commissioned for ministry. So, I hope that help uh, helps uh, Beth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's another question by uh, from Kennedy: Can a pastor buy for a political seat or accept nomination for a post? Is it proper? Okay, can a person be a pastor and a politician? Wow, that's, um, uh, you know, the thing is, they are taking care of people. They are, you know, spiritually nurturing people. And at the same time, in today's concept, context, you know, would it, um, would they, can they do that, um, right, uh, looking after a church? Well, if God has specifically called them and uh, graced them for the, job uh, i guess they they should they should step in and do that but we know that it's uh, you know knowing you know today's politics you know it's going to be a tough tough call a right? tough job and uh, but if god has called them to do that uh, then they definitely should you know take it up and do it if god has called them to do that and uh, right for example you know uh, we know, you know, the the demand on time for both these, uh, you know, both these callings, you know, to run uh, a city, state, or a nation, and to take care of uh, the household of God, right? The church, maybe it's a local church or a group of churches. We know the uh, every person has twenty four hours, and we know the demand of time on both this. You know, it's it's demanding. Okay. So if uh, God is called, probably, you know, God would, we need to have the grace of God to manage, to uh, do things in a, in a manner. Uh, so I don't know, I really haven't seen um, too much of that. I haven't seen that. Uh, but um, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's wonderful if it can happen. And uh, you know that, you know, uh, we need believers like in the in the political scene who can who 
can do a good job who can stand for righteousness and be impartial uh, bring in good judgment and good legislation so it'll be great but it's going to be a demanding thing um but by the grace of god they can yeah, yeah. is there any particular reason you're asking that question kennedy like is uh, um are you interested or you know is <laughs> i was not interested but there are occasions where yeah. they are nominated or they are okay. made board members eh or they are asked to vie for this local mm. post so it becomes a bit tricky at times because mm. it can be overwhelming but i'm not interested <laughs> okay i don't know okay. the yeah but it, right yeah. right yeah but it's yeah. Uh, you know it's a it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful call definitely you know to um uh, to do this uh, not only this but also you know being in the entertainment industry and high visibility um sphere of influence uh, you know you see the scope is uh, you know very large um at the same time comes with uh, you know a person needs to be really really sure okay they call to do this uh, and then uh, you know they do it right okay does paul recommend pastor as there is less responsibility and hence more focus on pastoral work um you know if when we study uh, Chris, the first corinthians and second corinthians um, uh, next year and we're going to be looking at, at that in detail because uh, in, um, in in first corinthians he, he talks about the you know the um, uh, he talks about you know singleness he talks about uh, you know all this um, and in chapter 7 first corinthians chapter 7 he talks about that so um, uh, in the light of immor- immorality in the light of the culture and so on so he talks about that and there you know he makes certain statements like uh, you know i uh, you know it'll be good if everyone is just like i am you know uh, but then he, he also contrasts you know uh, if a, what happens to a married person there are domestic responsibilities and and uh, you know roles and and uh, which come with it and uh, if a person is unmarried and so on so he talks about that um but he uh, he does not um, you know uh, give it as a, or share it as a um, as 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 a law of god as a commandment of god and so on he also talks about the beauty of marriage the, the fact that it's created by god and designed by god and so on but he comes to the place of saying you know uh it is uh, being single again being uh, 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 again a call and a grace right so so that's the thing so he says uh, just like how you need the grace of god to be married uh, he says you know you need the grace of grace of god to be single and also you know uh, it's uh, uh, because of the call of god and uh, you you know you you're able to focus and uh, do that um so he talks about it so it, it, it's not as if he recommends being unmarried but he def- definitely talks about the advantages he talks about the uh, struggles of both and also he, he, from what you get is that when, from reading that is that that you need the grace of god and you, it's a unique call of god uh, definitely you know once you recognize that um, let's just go with it so that is what we see um, all right hope that helps chris helps okay so um so was this then construed by the catholic uh, for the priests um i'm not sure how that uh, came into the catholic church like i haven't really studied that um like how uh, the emphasis of this probably you know um but it's interesting to see that uh, paul actually um uh you know he, he in corinthians again like he talks about uh, certain things about what he refers to as doctrines of demons and um, he talks about you know people uh, teaching about uh, uh abstaining from certain kinds of foods and uh, and and all that uh, so sorry, sorry, not in corinthians uh, elsewhere yeah so one of the episodes where he talks about that um so 
um so i'm so i i'm not really sure why this was uh, you know how in what nature uh, you know it came into the catholic church i'm not really sure but um, yeah so probably they laid a lot of emphasis on this and went to that not really sure what is the procedure for excommunicating an elder from a congregation without causing divisions um well uh, kennedy that's, that that is a tough call you know um, it, and again in uh, you know one corinthians he uh, talks about that and second corinthians follows up with uh, you know with the restoration of the person who was actually put uh, you know uh, out of the fellowship of the church but it's a um, it's a very serious thing uh, it's not for you know it's not because they don't agree with you or it's not because uh, you know it's it's not for any reason but it's something very very serious which is uh, affecting the church uh, which is, which is um, in a person is in living in open rebellion and uh, or direct um, you know in in sin openly in sin brazenly um, revolting against the laws of god so for such a person like corinthian culture was very permissive uh, and uh, it's talking about this person who is actually uh, having physical sexual relationship with his uh, father's wife you know like a stepmother and obviously uh, there have been attempts at correcting and uh, he's continuing to do so right so for that person the fellowship Church. So, so the procedure would be the same that uh, we take that first two steps, like you know, you tell the person uh, in person directly that what they're doing is wrong and uh, whatever they are doing is uh, affecting them. It's affecting the church, S and give them time to change. Uh, no change, again with uh, one or two witnesses. You know, so it's not just your word. As a leader, but uh, you know, it's also others who have seen this, and others who was also, you know, know, and uh, they they also see that it's not according to, it's not God honoring. It's also creating damage in in the body. So you do it with them, and even after that, you give them time. You give them time after to change up. After that, also, you know, there is no change. Then the person is, uh, you know. We are asked church anymore. Um, so that's the procedure. Obviously, uh, it has to be done in a in a manner that um, you know it, it's it's a tough thing. You know, all said and done, it is tough. It is difficult, and uh, obviously, the congregation has to know why. Uh, but they need not. Uh, you know, if, if if they have to know, you know, it's like affected a lot of people, and uh, maybe the entire congregation knows this person, and may maybe there needs to be some explanation given, right? Maybe if the person was a spiritual leader, you know, like a like a pastor or an elder, and uh, they need an explanation why that person has was asked to step down, and why that person was asked not to, you know, it's a serious thing, so it has to be explained to the congregation, and then. Obviously, there might be some people who might say, "But he's such a nice person, or she's such a nice person. Uh, maybe it, was, it is too tough on them, etc." And of course, you need to explain the process, what was done, what was, and uh, without getting into too many details, you know, because you don't want to, you know, kind of defame the person also at the same time, right? So, why is it done? It's done so that the person might actually repent and come back. Uh, to God, come back, uh, repent of his ways. At the same time, not creating further damage to uh, the other believers, you know, maybe people who look up to them, etc. Um, and in Second Corinthians, we read about that person repenting, and Paul writing to the Corinthian church, and he's saying, you know, now you need to, you know, forgive and receive that person back into fellowship, right? Uh, lest that person be swallowed up with too much sorrow. You know, he's. He's sorrowing. He's, he's he's repented. So uh, that changes things. So that's the uh, that's the intention with which this is done, right? So yeah. So this is the procedure. Yeah. Uh, church administration. I, I'm sure you will find it uh, you know, very very interesting. Uh, maybe look at uh, all these things which come into play. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, let's get back to um, Titus. So, uh, 
so he's saying you know uh, reject a device of man um, chapter 3 verse 10 after the first and second admonition so again this is the um, you know the uh, the extreme measure and uh, knowing that this is causing damage to the body of Christ so you see uh, a lot of um, things that we can glean from uh, from all these uh, from these three epistles first second timothy and titus uh, about the role of the pastor okay um now i just wanted to share uh, share a few things uh, from the book of honor so let me just uh, maybe project uh, just give me a second okay Um, I hope you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So. Um, so one of the things um, you know. Now this. Uh, these principles are uh, you know are for all the three uh, ministry gifts that we have seen so far. whether it be the evangelist the teacher or the the pastor um and uh, so this would be applicable across right um but uh, but the but the, um, but the but the thing is to certain things would be uh, you know very very crucial for the for the ministry of the the pastor okay um especially you know the second thing that we're going to talk about okay so firstly to understand that ministry about building people okay um when it comes to church ministry again there are a lot of things okay involved where, where is the church meeting and uh, you know uh, uh, and the other things you know the kind of uh, 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 things that are there at the form of worship and so on but understanding that ministry is about building people okay so paul himself says in first corinthians 3 uh, he is referring to the uh, the people the believers as god's field god's building okay um you know in first peter we uh, we saw peter saying you are god's flock okay so people of god so we have the privilege of ministering and building up the people of god okay um so first uh, thessalonians 2 verses 19 and 20 uh, you see the you know the whole perspective you know what is our joy or crown or rejoicing is it not you in the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming okay which means that you also have run the race and you have fought the good fight and you've come and you're saying you know i've i've done that right right till the end and verse 20 it says you are our glory and joy okay so it's about people about building people and so whatever we do you know whatever uh things that we do strategies whatever we do in ministry uh, the end result is you know how are people being impacted um how will this help uh, contribute to uh, you know the uh, spiritually edifying people and uh, and so on so it's about people right the thing is that we need to understand that it's a journey when it comes to church and pastoral ministry it's a journey right uh, which means that everybody is traveling together it's not something that hope happens overnight it's a process it's a journey okay so which means that uh, one needs to have patience um in in this journey okay um so you know in the writer of hebrews uh, is saying you know by this time you ought to be teachers but now you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of god and you have come to need milk and not solid food while that is um a hard thing to express to an audience but the, that's he says that's the reality you've you've come to need solid uh, you've come to need milk and uh, not solid food okay but then so what is the uh, what is the thing then right to to nourish the congregation to bring them to a place of uh, you know them partaking of solid food okay so so that's the thing right so uh, we see that again chapter 6 um it says therefore leaving these discussions of the elementary principles okay let us go on let us journey on to 
uh, other things. It's gone to perfection. And we don't want to lay again that foundation of repentance from dead works. And, you know, in verse 3, he says, you know, this will we will do if God permits. Right? We, we, will, um, uh, we, will, we will do this, you know, we, this journey. And uh, maybe we might have to come back, but we will do as God permits. So, um, so for us to understand that it's a journey, uh, taking people, it's about people. It's about uh, taking people, uh, you know, a journey along with people onto spiritual maturity. And uh, uh, we need to understand that, right? Uh, and uh, interestingly, if you look at the Lord, uh, what the Lord Jesus says in uh, John chapter 16, verse 1 and 4, 12, you know, he says, um, these things I've spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. But these things I've told you, uh, verse 4, where... Um, and when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And then verse 12, he says, these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Okay, so uh, knowing, understanding that the people need to grow to be able to receive solid food uh, is, is important. And uh, knowing that uh, the congregation is growing, spiritually growing, it is uh, you taking them, it's a line by line, precept upon precept, you know, kind of a thing, which happens uh, in pastoral ministry. Okay. Okay. Some of these things we've already seen, honoring leaders, elders, showing no partiality, um, etc. Right. Okay. Um, be grateful. Because uh, people are not an end to your agenda or your plan or your project. Uh, people are volunteering their time. People are coming forward to serve, uh, and maybe they are, you know, even they are as committed as staff and so on. But uh, being grateful and and typically, you know, Tim uh, Paul's example. Uh, that whole of chapter 16, you know, we refer to over and over again, Romans chapter 16, where it lists the people and uh, who are, he acknowledges the people who have served uh, alongside him. Right? And uh, typically, uh, Priscilla and Akila, he says, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches, but all the churches of the Gentiles. Um, plus Thessalonians also, we give thanks to God always for you all, you know, grateful to the Lord and also um, expressing that gratefulness, that gratitude to the people. Right? Um, another uh, uh, thing to remember in pastoral ministry is that uh, a pastoral ministry also would, um, uh, would involve, uh, you know, uh, uh, like uh, uh, it involves sorting out or solving people's difficulties and issues. And um, maybe it involves a counseling uh, kind of a environment and a ministry. Okay, so where, where people are called, uh, the pastor uh, definitely to some extent would um, be involved in counseling. Um, so, so when people come and share their personal issues, difficulties, some things of uh, sensitive nature in and uh, you know in uh, being uh, you know uh, to keep things confidential in co to keep things confidential uh, and in confidence you know those should not become prayer points you know shared as prayer points uh, because some things are sensitive and some things are right uh, shared in confidence so it needs to be uh, kept confidential. Okay, and not typically become a sermon illustration, right? Wow, this is a good sermon illustration. <laughs> okay, and uh, not really, you know, uh, make that public. Okay, uh, of course, we looked at correction, uh, correcting people lovingly um, so that they come to uh, know and also come to know what uh, uh, they're doing is wrong and also. Um, Come out, somehow, somehow be restored back. Okay, it's it's redemptive in nature. Every correction um, to have that perspective of it being redemptive. Okay, okay, um, right. Okay, so this is uh, this is good. Uh, having a personal strategy for handling 
difficult situations you know um so you, as you're journeying with god and um, you know working with people and different kinds of situations uh, it's good to have a uh, uh, have a personal strategy for certain things you know practically like uh, here the author pastor ashish shares about how uh, when it comes to um, uh, you know uh, uh, certain things like there you know needs to be discussion there needs to be meeting in person etc and certain other things uh, they, it's it's not required so it doesn't require the time and effort and and so uh, to have those things set in place um, and you you decide okay when it comes to correction when it comes to uh, you know dealing with some things not to do over over a you know over a text or an email but to really have a conversation right because uh, when it comes to a text or an email you can assume certain emotions you can say okay maybe you know it's uh, this is how you know when uh, for example zacchius come down the lord jesus you know says zacchius come down so you can put some emotion into that that right you can say zacchius come down is angry zacchius come down or hey zacchius come down you know you read into the text you can put that emotion so the same thing happens to a you know an, an sms or a or a text message or an email so sometimes we might wrong, read in the wrong emotion there right so um it helps when it's something sensitive something of a corrective nature um some difficult things it's better to have a conversation so one knows right uh, what is the uh, actual emotion of what is being uh, shared okay so uh, uh, do not control do not manipulate we've seen that overcome personal insecurities you know this is a uh, for a spiritual leader you know this is something that's uh, very very uh, important um, because because of personal insecurities in the sense maybe because of uh, i don't know it could come from a place of you know not maybe maybe you think that you're not really educated enough not skilled enough not gifted enough right not qualified enough or you know we look at certain flaws and we look at others who have it all together and 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 that becomes a a a, a source of insecurity you know for us our identity uh significant self worth everything you know not really drawn from christ but from some other source then it becomes a uh, personal insecurity right so that will reflect in our in our uh, you know in our leadership in our ministry to people and it's it's a cause for um, us to maybe even lord it over boss Uh, not be firm enough. No, it's just a fix, right? So uh, it's important that we overcome those personal insecurities, right? Um, because it, in, it involves meeting with people. It involves constantly uh, instructing people, being with people, and so on. So uh, it's important that we overcome this and uh, and put our security and uh, be secure in our significant self worth and everything in Christ. Right. Uh, and have that as the foundation okay certain other practical things are there um, which you can go through uh, and this is with uh, dealing with people okay not being uh, offended not carrying unforgiveness and bitterness uh, and so on and uh, so it's it's really practical uh, information uh, very valuable okay uh, flattery do not accept it do not give it uh and so on uh right so um maybe you can just go through uh and uh, the importance of raising leaders okay so uh, let me just uh, move on to um another chapter which is chapter 5 uh let me just move on to that um any questions on this that we have seen okay this is about conduct um 
any other questions? Some we had some good questions, some for practical nature. Um, Okay, so let's look at uh, you know this aspect. Uh, we have uh, five more minutes. Let's look at this this thing of uh, preaching, right? So, so as a spiritual leader, as a pastor, you know there is this teaching, there is this journeying together with people uh, and uh, whom God has appointed uh, us as spiritual leaders and uh, bring to maturity. Uh, and so on, uh, encouraging, exhorting, inspiring, right? So uh, the the um, uh, of course some of these things we've already seen in uh, biblical preaching, uh, but the thing is, um, you know, it's it's not to entertain people; uh, it it is to edify and establish people in God's word every time, right? Uh, the 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 message that is being preached, right, to establish people in God's word. Um, and the standard that we must maintain when it comes to God's word, you know, uh, integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, and sound speech that cannot be condemned. Titus 2, 7 and 8, saying, In all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned that one who is an opponent may be ashamed having nothing evil to say of you. Okay, so in the ministering, uh, you know, it's it's good to keep this in mind always, right? That um, you are dealing with truth, therefore communicate the truth, right? Don't, um, you know, uh, uh, don't add to the truth, um, or corrupt it with, a lie, even if it's a small one, uh, because uh, that is not what we are called to do. You know, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, respect, deep respect, uh, respect for respect for God and respect, uh, you know, uh, respect for people as well. Right? Um, because as a people of God, they are the, they belong to God. They are flock of God, so we have respect for people as well. Incorruptibility, meaning that um, you know, it is. Um, uh, you know, nothing that is manipulated, nothing that is uh, mixed with error, and also nothing that uh, which is inauthentic, you know, something that we have followed ourselves and uh, and then we teach, right? And ho wholesome words, right? Uh, sound speech that cannot be condemned. Uh, that's the last thing Paul uh, tells to uh, Titus. Uh, sound speech that cannot be condemned. So, um, you know, words that are wholesome, words that are, it's, uh, not, you know, people don't cringe when you when they listen. You, know, you don't uh, uh, use words, you don't sound vulgar and uh, in any way, um, right? So, so that it's not blamed, right? The ministry is not blamed. Okay, preach to impart, not impress. Okay, address difficult topics, but do it with love. Okay, so so here again, because we're dealing with and journeying with people, there will be you know difficult issues uh, that may need to be addressed. Okay, so people who are sincere, people who are you know uh, uh, you know people who are sincere, people who are um dedicated but maybe you know there are certain things that need to be addressed uh maybe certain difficult things with regard to character with regard to you know one area in their life which, which they are not um you know uh, which they are not really taking care of maybe maybe something to do with family something to do with children uh, maybe ignoring or shirking certain responsibilities and these need to be addressed as well and like we saw uh, like we uh, uh, saw in First Timothy, we see that the range of topics that uh, Paul uh, shares, uh, you know, you uh, and Paul addresses, and he encourages Timothy to address as well, right? Um, so, um, so address those topics, address those issues, but uh, do it from a place of love. You know, there are certain things which need to be. You know, commanded, and there are certain things that need to be taught. There are certain things that are reasoned with, uh, but do it from a place of love. Okay, um, okay. I think we looked at uh, these uh, in preaching. You know, uh, giving it 
uh, word in season, etc. Okay, maybe we'll just close with this: stay current, but avoid theological digressions. Um, you know, we need to be re relevant. We need to speak the now word of God, and we need to be aware of what the Lord is doing, but uh, in our midst. Um, uh, but at the same time, avoid, you know, digressing from uh, from the word. Right, digressing from the the truth of God's word, um, like we see some examples in uh, in in Apollos. You know, Apollos was, was a person who was uh, very strong. He was very articulate, uh, but there are certain things that he did not know. Like he he was really not really updated. You know, he was not staying current with the with the move of God. Right in. Uh, like for example, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and so on. He he knew only of the, of the baptism of John, so uh, we read it up, read about it, and then uh, Aquila and Priscilla they explained, and uh, he was humble enough to receive, and uh, we see that uh, uh, you know he's uh, he taught the word, they taught the word uh, of God more accurately. They made that alignment, and he was a blessing. Right? Paul refers to uh, Apollos, uh, and uh, and and so on. So uh, you know, stay current, but in doing that, also uh, do not digress from the foundations. Do not digress from the um, the uh, from theologically, right? From the Word of God. You know, uh, stay rightly divide the Word of God. Uh, Paul warns about that, right? We saw Hymenaeus, Philetus, and uh, and also uh, John talks about many who have who do not even confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, and but they have, you know, they uh, their their message is spreading. They are uh, you know sharing those uh, messages. Okay, so we'll stop here, and uh, yeah, so uh, we've been looking at. Um, the pastoral ministry and spending some time on it, some practical things here as well. Um, yeah. Um, so next class we will we'll continue with uh, looking at some maybe uh, you know watching some videos about pastors uh, who uh, some maybe some contemporary ones, uh, some who have gone on to be with the Lord and uh, about their lives as well. Okay. So we'll stop here and uh, you have a great week ahead. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Russia. Hey, see you. God bless.